Hello there. It's Fita Master Ingvar Jóhannesson. And I have yet another pattern for you. You're gonna like this one, so you might as well like the video right now. This pattern involves a queen sacrifice. We like that. Uh, other factors that we're going to need is this modern type of eight pawn here. A far advanced eight pawn, hairy the eight pawn. Sometimes referred to as a thorn pawn because it's a thorn in your opponent's side or a fawn pawn. People use different terms, doesn't matter. It's a cramping pawn and this pattern shows one reason why. We're taking away this d7 square and look at this. Queen h8 is the first move. We get the king to the corner. And then we land the mate. So here the rook was on the f file. <coughs> That's quite common for this pattern. The rook could also be on the eighth rank, like here. Very similar situation, almost the same. The pawn is covering this. And we can play the queen to the quarter pocket, queen h8. In this case, because the rook is not on the f file, the king could escape, but now we start winning material. And actually, we could. Once the king comes to f7, we can uh, win the queen with queen g7. Uh, note that in the other example, and, and both of those that we've seen, that the mate on g7 was, co uh, was actually covered. So that's why we need the mate in the corner, the queen in the corner to set up the mate. Now, we previously had the pawn on h6. This can also arise very nicely with... Uh, with the knight. In this case, the knight would go to e8, importantly blocking the rook from the f8 square. After the king moves, the only move, we go with the queen to the a corner pocket and then land the mate. So I like to call this queen ball, the corner pocket. For the, for those of you that that have played eight ball, you know, you know when you when you're slamming that eight ball in the corner pocket. <coughs> You slam it, and that's how you should put the queen when you do this over the board. Queen h8, you slam it. Boom! Queen ball, corner pocket. So let's see some examples of this. And, well, most of the examples are similar, but I try to find, you know, ways that, you know, there are slight differences and variations. So let's get into it. In this one. White plate knight d5, queen c6, and queen c3. So white is setting up rook g7. Black did not want to allow that, so he played rook b7, but now rook a8. And here, despite seeing rook g7, it seems like black overlooked white's threat, played queen takes d5, and the queen ball in the corner pocket landed. You can go here, queen takes mate, or you can take the queen, that's mate either way. And once again, note the importance of the fawn pawn, the hairy pawn, the h pawn. Here we see a build up, we see that black is sort of short on defenders, he's struggling a bit here, did not necessarily play the best move, but position was very difficult, and now h6, clamping down on the king, king went to g8, and now white set up the queen ball in the corner, corner pocket, by attacking the bishop on c8, now this is very difficult to deal with, black went with queen d7, but then the queen comes back here to e5, and the difficulties are starting to mount. Black did not notice White's threat. He took a pawn. But obviously we know now that there is a big threat. And Bernard Richard played Queen H8. Nothing to, <laughs> nothing to do but take it and then mate. Always a beautiful pattern. I like this one. So here, let's actually flip it around because it was black. Doing the business here with the A pawn this time around. And 
this was was quite funny. You know, Black has been pressing a bit in this game, but here he retreated the queen. Still, White is stuck because of the mid threat, but he attacked the pawn on d5, and here Black was very very sneaky, and he played uh, rook c7. Oh oh, did you attack my pawn? No, uh, I, I wasn't sure. Oh, you did. But we're gonna call the ambulance not for Black but for White after the queen a1. Same thing, corner pocket, landed, bam. Here white sneakily played rook d2. And this time around we don't have a rook on <clears throat> the bishop file. We don't have a rook on the eighth, but it, it can still work. And black wasn't careful, played queen c5. Anticipating this move, but then we play king here and the rook is attacked. And this is attacked, so. Unfortunately for black, we can play this. Oh! <laughs> now if the king comes out, there's nothing hanging on d8, and queen p7 will be made. And if you take, it's still going to be made. Because you can't do anything, you can only interpose, and then we kind of get the final position that we're used to. Very nicely done here by Juan Leopold. This is basically more of the same. <clears throat> I was just shocked that this happened to such a strong player. Uh, Sigurd Slanka, Grandmaster with white, he played bishop takes b5, which obviously lands the queen ball and the corner pocket. Poco! <laughs> and Lanka resigned. Okay, how about getting some? Some knights into the action. No pawn here, but we can use the knight this time around. So knight e1, cutting the rook off, so we can land on f1. But wait, sometimes we have to apply the pattern and see if there is a difference. Here the difference is the queen can interpose. But that does that make a difference? In this case it doesn't, because we still land the queen ball on the corner pocket. Has to take and check. Now this will be made without the queen. But here we have a bishop on the long diagonal and that's made. You can interpose but only the rook. And then we take it and that's actually a beautiful, beautiful mate. Which sort of should deserve uh, some kind of an award on its own. Here the final moves of the game between Trakonetev, strong Macedonian grandmaster, against Karl Johan Ribbegren. And here Netev moved in, knight f6, the king is wide open. It went to the corner, and now we know what Netev did. He played knight a check. Nothing interposing. So we can play queen ball in the corner pocket. Takes and takes. Actually, Karl Johan resigned, but obviously this is the mate, and the knight is covering this. Usually the pawn, as we know, but here the knight is helping. So here, <clears throat> same, but a little bit of a variance. So does it work here? Does it work? Can we play 98? If you're not sure, like the video again, you know, just make sure. Okay, we can play 98. King g8, queen ball corner pocket, resigns because takes, everything covered. Again, he can interpose. We had a situation where we could give this check and mate here, beautiful mate, but here we have rook takes g8, also mate. So I'm gonna leave you with two exercises for you. Uh, first one, the white piece is Mikael Basman. Can you find how Basman finished this game? Tell me in the comments, tell me what Basman played. And also, here's a game that Magnus Carlsen played against Vichy Anand, a Blitz game. I'll send you the link here. 
in the card. Check out the Blitz game. What do you think Carlson played? Tell me in the comments and then check out the Blitz game. I think you will be surprised. I'm not going to spoil it, but check out the Blitz game. But tell me the solution first. And you can, then you can come back, answer your own comment and tell me if you were surprised. <laughs> but way to move here. You should be able to solve it, but again, check out the video. So that's it for the Queen Ball in the Corner Pocket. Hope you liked it and see you soon with another epic chess video. Until then, bye bye.